how the whale got his fruit. In the sea, once upon a time, oh, my best beloved, there was a whale, and he ate fishes. He ate the starfish, and the garfish, and the crab, and the dab, and the plate, and the date, and the skate, and his mate, and the mackerel, and the pickerel, and the really, truly, twirly-whirly eel. All the fishes he could find in all the sea, he ate with his mouth. So, till at last, there was only one small fish left in all the sea, and he was a small, cute fish and he swam a little behind the whale's right ear so as to be out of harm's way. Then the whale stood up on his tail and said, I'm hungry. And the small, cute fish said in a small, cute voice, Noble and generous to taste me. Have you ever tasted none? No. Said the whale. What is it like? said the small, cute fish. Nice, but lovely. Then fetch me some, said the whale, and he laid the sea and the fox with his tail. One at the time is enough, said the cute fish. If you swim to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, that is magic you will find, sitting on a raft in the middle of the sea, with nothing on but a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders? You must not forget the suspenders, best beloved. And a jackknife, one shipwrecked mariner, who, it is only fair to tell you, is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, as fast as he could swim. And on a raft, in the middle of a sea, with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders, you must particularly remember the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife. He found one single, solitary, shipwrecked mariner, trailing his toes in the water. his mummy's leave to paddle, or else he would never have done it, because he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Then the whale opened his mouth back and back and back till it nearly touched his tail, and he swallowed the shipwrecked mariner and the raft he was sitting on, and his blue canvas breeches, and the suspenders, which you must not forget, and the jackknife. He swallowed them all down into his warm, dark inside cupboard, and then he smacked his lips, so, and turned round three times on his tail. But as soon as the mariner, who was a man of infinite resource and sagacity, found himself truly inside the whale's warm, dark inside cupboard. He stumped and he jumped and he thumped and he bumped. And he pranced and he danced and he banged and he clanged and he hit and he bit and he leaped and he creeped and he prowled and he howled and he hopped and he dropped and he cried and he sighed and he crawled and he bawled. And he jumped and he leapt and he danced hornpipes where he shouldn't. And the whale felt most unhappy indeed. Had you forgotten the suspender? So he said to the cute fish, This man is very nubbly, and besides, he is making me hiccup. <laughs> what shall I do? Tell <laughs> him to come out, said the cute fish. <laughs> so the whale called down his own throat to the shipwrecked mariner. Come out and behave yourself. I've got the hiccup. <laughs> nay, nay, said the mariner. Not so, but far otherwise. 
Take me to my natal shore on the white cliffs of Albion, and I'll think about it. <laughs> and he began to dance more than ever. You had <laughs> said the stewed fish to the whale. You have warned you that he is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. <laughs> So the whale swam and swam and swam <gasps> with both flippers and his tail as hard as he could for the hiccup. <gasps> and at last he saw the mariner's natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion. <gasps> and he rushed halfway up the beach and opened his mouth wide and wide and wide <gasps> and said, Change here for Winchester, Ashalot, Nashua. Keen and stations on the Fitchburg Road. And just as he said, Fitch, the mariner walked out of his mouth. Here we are. But while the whale had been swimming, the mariner, who was indeed a person of infinite resource and sagacity, had taken his jackknife and cut up the raft into a little square grating all running crisscross, and he had tied it firm with his suspenders. Now you know why you are not to forget the suspenders. And he dragged that grating good and tight into the whale's throat, and there it stuck. Then he recited the following sloka, which, as you haven't heard it, I will now proceed to relate. By means of a grating, I have stopped your aching. By means of a grating, I have stopped your aching. For a mariner, he was also an Hibernian. By means of a grating, I have stopped your And he stepped out on the shingle. I am in love with the thing. I have stopped the wedding. And went home to his mother. Mother! Who had given him leave to trail his toes in the water. These darling boys. And he married and lived happily ever afterward. So did the whale, but from that day on, the grating in his throat, which he could neither cough up nor swallow down, prevented him eating anything except very, very small fish. And that is the reason why whales nowadays never eat men or boys or little girls. The small, stute fish went and hid himself in the mud under the door sills of the equator. He was afraid that the whale might be angry with him. The sailor took the jackknife home. He was wearing the blue canvas breeches when he walked out on the shingle. The suspenders were left behind, you see, to tie the grating with. And that is the end of that tale. Portholes are dark and green because of the seas outside. When the ship goes swap with the wiggle between, and the steward falls into the soup tureen, and the trunks begin to slide. <laughs> lies on the floor in a heap and mummy tells you to let her sleep and you aren't waked or washed or dressed why then you will know if you haven't yet your 50 north and 40 west <laughs> 